Welcome to Somerset Place State Historic Site, once the third largest plantation in Antebellum, North Carolina. Throughout its 80-year history, three generations of the Collins family owned the plantation, starting with Josiah I. So he was born in Somersetshire, England in 1735 and married Anne Lewis of Staffordshire in 1761. Unfortunately, we have not uncovered any information about Anne, but the couple did have five children, uh, two of whom mysteriously disappear from historical records. Uh, following the death of his wife, Josiah emigrated to Boston in 1773 with his two oldest children. He ultimately moves to North Carolina and settles permanently in Edenton. It was there that he started a prosperous shipping firm and a rope manufacturing business. With substantial capital derived from both of these enterprises, Josiah formed a partnership known as the Lake Company in 1784. So he and two other men were granted swamp land that surrounded and included Lake Phelps. They also sent a ship to West Africa to purchase 80 enslaved Native Africans who were forced to dig a canal and clear land. Because of enslaved labor, the plantation quickly became very profitable for the businessmen. However, Josiah bought out his partners by 1816 and renamed the plantation Somerset Place after his home county in England. He continued to administer the property from Edenton, and in his will, he stipulated that all his land on the lake would be divided among his grandchildren from Josiah II, who would administer their holdings during his lifetime. Um, Josiah I passed away in 1819. And so his oldest son, Josiah II, also managed his father's holdings in Edenton, including the rope walk. And it was there that enslaved person manufactured high quality rope for rigging ships and sign products for fisheries. Um, he married Anne Rebecca Davies in 1803, and the couple had eight children. Um, Anne was born into a prosperous family in New Bern and moved to Edenton with her husband, where the townspeople welcomed her with a public ball. Um, tragically, she passed away suddenly in 1833. Uh, meanwhile, Josiah II dramatically expanded operations here at Somerset, and it was into this environment that his eldest son, Josiah III, moved in 1830, becoming Somerset's first resident owner. He had wed Mary Riggs the year before. Um, Josiah III still did not have clear title to property on the lake. Instead, he convinced his father to deed him Somerset Place proper in 1835. Now, four years later, Josiah II passed away without a will. Um, now, Josiah I had stipulated that Josiah III and his six siblings, born before 1819, would receive plots of land along Lake Phelps, but left no mention of enslaved persons. Uh, thus, it was up to county commissioners to divide the Collins' enslaved persons. So each of Josiah II's children, including his youngest daughter, Alethea, who was born in 1824, received an equal share of the enslaved population based on their value. Um, Josiah III purchased or hired many of these enslaved persons with several major exceptions. He also reorganized Somerset Place into his personal estate. He oversaw the construction of a new house for his family by 1839, the one I'm in right now. Uh, in addition, he was very obsessed with controlling the enslaved population because most of his money was invested in these enslaved human beings. And it was on these people that the plantation was built and became very profitable. Um, by the 1840s, Josiah was extremely wealthy and he showcased his prosperity through lavish parties that his wife Mary hosted. And she was born in 1808, the daughter of an established family from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, moving to Somerset Place with her husband marked a very different lifestyle from the city she was accustomed to. Yet she adapted, serving as Josiah's personal secretary and entertaining guests. In addition, Mary was the mother of six sons, Josiah, Edward, Hugh, George, William Kent, and Arthur. Uh, the boys received a formal education in the on-site boarding school. Unfortunately, through a series of tragic accidents, uh, Edward, Hugh, and William Kent passed away before the age of 20. And with the outbreak of the Civil War, the Collins family fled to Hillsborough, North Carolina, where Josiah III passed away unexpectedly in 1863. Um, the end of the war and the emancipation of the enslaved community left the family deeply indebted. Yet they refused to pay the newly freed persons wages or allow them to rent land, so almost all the formerly enslaved persons left the plantation by late 1865. And without a labor force to pay off debts, Mary transferred Somerset to her nephew, William Shepard, two years later. Um, she remained living on the property in the Colony House until her death in 1872. Now this is just a brief overview of the Collins family, and if you want to learn more, please visit us for a guided tour uh, that are offered upon request Tuesday through Saturday between 9 and 3.30. These tours last approximately an hour and a half and go throughout the whole site to present a comprehensive social history of the enslaved and free persons who lived and worked here. As part of the tour, we will go into the original Collins home right here and examine the lives of Josiah III, Mary, and their sons. 
Um, lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more content like this. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon here at Somerset Place.